Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Ari, and today we're going to have some more stories about our toxic life. But before we start, it would be so much appreciated if you would subscribe to my channel, like the video, if you enjoy it, and maybe leave a comment down below. These simple clicks would mean a lot to the future of this channel and really reward the effort that I put in every day. And now without further ado, let's go. Today's first story. In this story, Obi discovers his wife's infidelity during a supposed business trip and confronts her with a friend. They catch her in the act, leading to a messy divorce. Later, she regrets her actions, claims to be pregnant, and seeks financial help. He, now focused on a successful business venture, rejects her plea, highlighting the consequences of her choices. The story ends with the man finding happiness in his new life, while his ex-wife faces the repercussions of her actions alone. Now let's get into the story. My wife, 30 of 4 years, told me 32 she had to go on a business trip 5 hours away. That included one overnight stay. She'd never had to do this before, but she was only at this job for 9 months at the time. She told me they were so pleased with her work that they chose her to be the one to go. She would be paid to do this, and it was like a nice little getaway. Since I didn't express my enthusiasm, she added that she needed time alone to do some soul searching. That was an odd comment. I asked her how she expected to do any soul searching while on a two-day business trip. She just rolled her eyes and said I was being too technical on the day of her departure. I thought about how weird it was that she said she needed alone time. My wife didn't like to be alone normally, and this town was so far away. I told my friend what was going on and he convinced me that we should follow her. At first, my wife hesitated to tell me her hotel room number. She gave some lame excuse, but I told her it was just for safety purposes and there was no way I was going to drive 5 hours to come see her on a one night stay. It was so funny. My friend was convinced we were going to find her in bed with someone, but I was skeptical. Pickle, of course. I couldn't think that about my wife. She wouldn't line like that, would she? We got there around 10 p.m way after my wife got there, worked, and settled down. She texted me good night, but even that was odd. My wife usually stayed up pretty late. We went up the elevator and stood in front of her room door. Our plan was that if someone else opened the door, we were going to barge in before determining if we had the wrong room or not because we had to prove my wife was in the room with someone before the door was shut on us. I seriously wouldn't have been this ballsy if it wasn't for my friend. He encouraged me to be brave enough to discover the truth before he knocked. I could hear moaning, but I told myself it was coming from another room. A man opened the door and we barged in while recording on our phones. My wife was lying on the bed naked, trying desperately to pull the tucked in bedding loose to cover herself. When that failed, she jumped off to the side of the bed and ducked down low. She screamed for Christ's sake. I thought you were going to call me on the hotel room phone, not show up here. I had no idea what to say. I was in disbelief. My friend had a lot to say. He'd known her through me for these past four years, so he felt entitled to tell her what easy, worthless thing she was for cheating on me. He pointed the camera at the guy and he covered his face, grabbed his stuff, and ran down the hallway. It was like he wasn't supposed to be there and couldn't risk being discovered. My wife cried and tried to yell after him, but realized it was hopeless. She realized he didn't want to stay with her or defend her at all. She hugged her knees, crying. Sitting naked on the floor in the corner of the hotel room while being filmed, all I could think was that she deserved it. While recording, I asked her what the hell she was thinking. Who was that guy? She said she didn't want to tell me anything. She just wanted me to leave. My friend demanded answers on my behalf, telling her it was the least she could do to make up for some of my pain. She cried and said she didn't know what we wanted her to say. I told him we needed to leave. She wasn't going to say anything to make this better. On the way out, I told her she wasn't welcome to return home. She just screamed really loud in frustration. The ride home was pretty quiet. My friend apologized for what I was going through, but I told him it was thanks to him that I even knew my wife was cheating on me. We listened to some epic music and talked some more. He stayed with me at my house for a few weeks while I filed for divorce and put all my wife's stuff in the garage. 
I had a camera in the garage, so I didn't mind letting her type in the garage code to get her stuff. She arrived one day with a small moving truck. She was by herself while she loaded her stuff up. She didn't know about the camera I installed, so it recorded as she loaded some of the things I owned into her moving truck. These were expensive and she probably just wanted to sell them. I called her and told her I just saw her steal my stuff from the garage and she tried to play dumb. I told her to bring them back or they'd be held to petty. Three days later, I arrived home and my things were sitting on the porch. For weeks later, she called me at two a crying because she was filled with regret. She missed me and the life we built together. More importantly, she found out she was pregnant. I knew for sure it wasn't mine. We hadn't had intimate for two and a half months. Now she was sleeping on the floor of her sister's apartment because her parents wouldn't let her live with them. I told her she did this to both of us and it couldn't be fixed. I was not going to support her or the affair child. Her only choice was to keep moving forward and make better decisions from now on. She apologized to me one more time before hanging up. We haven't spoken for a long time now. I think she still lives with her sister. I started a little business and hobby with my friend and it's really taken off. I have a passion for it and it makes me money, so I'm very happy. My ex's sister tried asking me for some help with rent and baby expenses because somehow it was my fault. The responsibility of my ex fell onto her. I guess that's an indication that my ex isn't in a hurry to get back to work. I just laughed at the request for money. I understand times are tough, but I refuse to help support that lying, cheating woman. Today's second story. In this story, Obi became suspicious of his wife spending time alone with their son's friend. Multiple odd encounters raised concerns, and suspicions heightened when the friend was found in their home unexpectedly. Confronted by the husband, the wife eventually confessed to having an affair with the friend. He sought support from neighbors and the wife's parents, leading to a family meeting where she admitted her actions. He decided to separate, taking their son with him. The wife faced disapproval and disownment from her parents and he is contemplating eviction. Now let's get into the story. I was 41 and my wife was 39. Our teenage son had a friend that was 19 years old. I became suspicious that something was up. When I came home from work one day, my son's friend was talking to my wife in the kitchen, standing awfully close to her. I couldn't hide the surprise on my face when I openly asked where our son was. They both spoke up to tell me that he just left to run to the store. I clarified by himself to point out how odd it was that they were spending time alone. The boy moved away from my wife a little. Looking down at his shoes, he said that it was kind of a bummer, so we ran out the front door to go catch up with him. Although I was trying to hide my concern, when I looked at my wife, she saw it. She offered the excuse that our son's friend wanted to ask her for baking tips. Apparently, he was signed up for a mother-son baking contest with his mom and wanted to surprise her with his knowledge. She blushed slightly and resumed getting out the stuff she needed to bake a pie. This was believable to me at the time, even though it was odd. I trusted my wife because in all the years we were married up until this point, she was faithful to me. I'm not sure how much time passed from that, but one day I returned home from work again to find my wife laying on the living room couch in lingerie I never saw before. She said it was a sexy surprise for a deserving husband. After we had a really fun time, my son walked into the house. Thank God we had time to go upstairs and change. The whole time I thought he was already home in his room. He asked where his friend was, which confused me even more. My wife quickly told my son's son that he left only a minute after he did and asked if he had caught up to him. My son said no, and that it was weird because he thought he was going to wait for him to return. My wife added that my son's friend had said that he forgot. He promised his dad he would help him work on something. This was getting stranger by the minute, and my wife was visibly uncomfortable. My son could tell that something didn't make sense but dropped it and went in his room. I looked at my wife perplexed. I didn't know what to say to her. For some reason, it seemed unfair for me to ask her if she was hiding something. As much as I wanted to, I didn't ask her any questions. Fast forward some time, and I was returning home from a work trip. It was supposed to last four days, but since I already knew all about the fourth day's topic, 
I was permitted to go home early. I decided not to tell my wife or son and surprised them by showing up early at dinner time with a large Togo order from our favorite restaurant. When I arrived, the house was quiet. I called them, but got no response. I wasn't worried right away. They could have gone out. I just put the food down in the kitchen and turned around to see my wife standing in the hallway. She looked disheveled and very concerned. I greeted her warmly, as I always do, and she forced herself to copy my tone. I asked her where our son was, but before she answered, I caught something in the corner of my eye on the stairs. I looked instinctively and thought it was my son for a millisecond, but it wasn't. It was my son's friend. He looked extremely embarrassed and fearful when he greeted me and said he must be going. He rushed out the front door without closing it. I asked my wife again where our son was, but a million more questions were forming in my head. She said that our son went to another friend's house and that the boy was just leaving to catch up with him. This was the last straw. I asked her why I had discovered her alone more than once with our son's friend. She was stunned by the question and attempted to say that nothing like that was going on. I told her that something definitely was and that it was not acceptable for her to be alone with a young man. I asked her why they both looked so guilty when I got here, and she said it was because she was worried about how it would look from my point of view. When my son got home later, I asked him if he knew his friend was over here while he was at another friend's house. He said no and stood by his answer. When I told him he must be completely honest with me, I thanked him and left his room. From this point, I knew something was happening, but I couldn't prove it. I was pretty good friends with one of our neighbors and decided to ask him if he noticed anything. It took him a whole day to call me back and tell me that he remembered seeing a boy running out of our back door a while back. I asked him to narrow down when this happened, and he eventually told me it was the very same day. I came home from work to find my wife on the couch wearing lingerie. He said he'd be willing to testify for me so that my wife might confess. After finding this out, I called my wife's parents. Think what you will. I became really close to them over the years, and if anyone knew my wife, it would be them. When I confided in them all that happened and what I saw, they sided with me. They said that I wasn't crazy and that she was probably up to something. They apologized to me already and said they would be willing to attend a family meeting to try to get to the bottom of it for the duration of the strange occurrences. My wife was extra attentive to my needs and nervous whenever I started talking to her son about his day or to whatever she was up to. By chance, on the day and time I planned to have everyone come over, she was extremely nervous. It was the perfect time for us to confront her. With the information I gathered. When the three of them arrived, her face looked like her worst fears were realized. She tried to ask why they were there, but you could tell in the way she asked that she already knew it was about her. Her manner is an expression totally gave her away. She tried to play dumb while we told her what we thought was happening, and we added that if there was ever a time to come clean for the sake of the family, it was now. Eventually, her petrified face started sobbing, and she admitted that she slept with our son's friend more than once. It was the most pathetic thing I ever saw coming from the woman I once loved and respected. After she confessed, I felt a metaphorical dagger go through my heart. I knew I couldn't look at her the same way ever again. As a matter of fact, no one could look at her the same way after that. The neighbor left awkwardly and her parents told her that they were extremely disappointed and couldn't accept this behavior from the daughter they raised. They said they planned to disown her and she wasn't welcome at their house. I could barely hear the last part because she was crying so loudly and begging them not to do it. I started packing immediately after her parents hugged me goodbye. It took all my strength to ignore her as she cried for forgiveness. When we sat down with our son to explain what was happening, he looked at his mother like he hated her. Despite her crying and apologies, he quickly elected to live with me so that he could start over and meet new friends. It was like he knew how quickly this story was going to spread among his peers. After his prediction was proven correct, he made it clear to his mother that she ruined his life by cheating on his father. She still lives in the old family home, but she's alone and struggling to pay me rent for it. I could evict her at this point, but I'm waiting until I know it's time for that.